The Complete Works of William Shakespeare by William Shakespeare ACTV, CNI, Coventry Enter Warwick, the mayor of Coventry, two messengers, and others upon the walls Warwick. Where is the post that came from valiant Oxford? How far hence is thy lord, mine honest fellow? First messenger. By this at Dunsmore, marching hitherward. Warwick. How far off is our brother Montague? Where is the post that came from Montague? Second messenger. By this at Dane Try, with a puissant troop. Enter S.I.R. John Somerville Warwick. Say, Somerville, what says my loving son? And by thy guess how nigh is Clarence now? Somerville. At Southam I did leave him with his forces, and do expect him here some two hours hence. Drum heard Warwick. Then Clarence is at hand, I hear his drum. Somerville. It is not his, my lord, here Southam lies. The drum your honor hears marcheth from Warwick. Warwick. Who should that be? Belike unlooked for friends. Somerville. They are at hand, and you shall quickly know. March. Flourish. Enter King Edward, Gloucester, and soldiers King Edward. Go, trumpet to the walls, and sound the parl. Gloucester. See how the surly Warwick mans the wall. Warwick. O oh, unbid spite! Is sportful Edward come? Where slept our scouts, or how are they seduct that we could hear no news of his repair? King Edward. Now, Warwick, wilt thou ope the city gates, speak gentle words, and humbly bend thy knee, call Edward king, and at his hands beg mercy? And he shall pardon thee these outrages. Warwick. Nay, rather, wilt thou draw thy forces hence, confess who set thee up and pluck thee down, call Warwick patron, and be penitent. And thou shalt still remain the Duke of York. Gloucester. I thought, at least, he would have said the king, or did he make the jest against his will? Warwick. Is not a dukedom, sir, a goodly gift? Gloucester. I, by my faith, for a poor earl to give. I'll do thee service for so good a gift. Warwick. Twas I that gave the kingdom to thy brother. King Edward. Why then tis mine, if but by Warwick's gift. Warwick. Thou art no atlas for so great a weight, and weakling, Warwick takes his gift again, and Henry is my king, Warwick his subject. King Edward. But Warwick's king is Edward's prisoner. And gallant Warwick, do but answer this. What is the body when the head is off? Gloucester. Alas, that Warwick had no more forecast, but whilst he thought to steal the single tin, the king was slyly fingered from the deck. You left poor Henry at the bishop's palace, and ten to one you'll meet him in the tower. King Edward. Tis even so, yet you are Warwick still. Gloucester. Come, Warwick, take the time, kneel down, kneel down. Nay, when? Strike now, or else the iron cools. Warwick. I had rather chop this hand off at a blow, and with the other fling it at thy face, than bear so low a sail to strike to thee. King Edward. Sail how thou canst, have wind and tied thy friend, this hand, fast wound about thy coal-black hair, shall, whilst thy head is warm and new cut off, write in the dust this sentence with thy blood, when changing Warwick now can change no more. Enter Oxford, with drum and colors Warwick. O oh, cheerful colors! See where Oxford comes. Oxford. Oxford, Oxford, for Lancaster. He and his forces enter the city, Gloucester. The gates are open, let us enter too. King Edward. So other foes may set upon our backs. Stand we in good array, for they no doubt will issue out again and bid us battle. If not, the city being but of small defense, will quietly rouse the traitors in the same. Warwick. Oh, welcome, Oxford, for we want thy help. Enter Montague, with drum and colors Montague. Montague, Montague, for Lancaster. He and his forces enter the city, Gloucester. Thou and thy brother both shall by this treason even with the dearest blood your bodies bear. King Edward. The harder matched, the greater victory. 
my mind presseth happy gain and conquest. Enter Somerset, with drum and colors Somerset. Somerset, Somerset, for Lancaster. He and his forces enter the city, Gloucester. Two of thy name, both dukes of Somerset, have sold their lives unto the house of York, and thou shalt be the third, if this sword hold. Enter Clarence, with drum and colors Warwick. And lo where George of Clarence sweeps along, of force enough to bid his brother battle, with whom an upright seal to right prevails more than the nature of a brother's love. Clarence. Clarence, Clarence, for Lancaster. King Edward. E.T. too brute wilt thou stab Caesar too? A parley, sirrah, to George of Clarence. Sound a parley. Richard and Clarence whisper, Warwick. Come, Clarence, come. Thou wilt if Warwick call. Clarence. Taking the red rose from his hat and throwing it at Warwick, father of Warwick, know you what this means. Look here, I throw my infamy at thee. I will not ruinate my father's house, who gave his blood to lime the stones together, and set up Lancaster. Why, trowest thou, Warwick, that Clarence is so harsh, so blunt, unnatural, to bend the fatal instruments of war against his brother and his lawful king? Perhaps thou wilt object him. Why, holy oath? To keep that oath were more impiety than Jephthah when he sacrificed his daughter. I am so sorry for my trespass made that, to deserve well at my brother's hands, I here proclaim myself thy mortal foe, with resolution whereso I meet thee as I will meet thee, if thou stir abroad to plague thee for thy foul misleading me. And so, proud-hearted Warwick, I defy thee, and to my brother turn my blushing cheeks. Pardon me, Edward, I will make amends, and Richard, do not frown upon my faults, for I will henceforth be no more unconstant. King Edward, now welcome more, and ten times more beloved, than if thou never hadst deserved our hate. Gloucester, welcome, good Clarence, this is brother-like. Warwick, O passing traitor, perjured and unjust. King Edward, what, Warwick, wilt thou leave thy town and fight? Or shall we beat the stones about thine ears? Warwick, alas, I am not cooped here for defense. I will away towards Barnet presently and bid thee battle, Edward, if thou darest. King Edward. Yes, Warwick, Edward dares and leads the way. Lords, to the field, St. George and victory. Exit Yorkists, march. Warwick and his company follow, scene two. A field of battle near Barnet Alarum and excursions. Enter King Edward, bringing forth Warwick, wounded King Edward. So lie thou there. Die thou, and die our fear, for Warwick was a bug that feared us all. Now, Montague, sit fast, I seek for thee, that Warwick's bones may keep thine company. Exit Warwick. Ah, who is nigh? Come to me, friend or foe, and tell me who is Victor York or Warwick. Why ask I that? My mangled body shows, my blood, my want of strength, my sick heart shows, that I must yield my body to the earth and by my fall, the conquest to my foe. Thus yields the cedar to the axe's edge, whose arms gave shelter to the princely eagle, under whose shade the ramping lion slept, whose top branch over peered Joe's spreading tree and kept low shrubs from winter's powerful wind. These eyes, that now are dimmed with death's black veil, have been as piercing as the midday sun to search the secret treasons of the world. The wrinkles in my brows, now filled with blood, were lignit off to kingly sepulchres, for who lived king, but I could dig his grave? And who durst smile when Warwick bent his brow? Lo, now my glory smeared in dust and blood. My parks, my walks, my manners that I had, even now forsake me, and of all my lands is nothing left me but my body's length. What is pomp, rule, reign, but earth and dust? And live we how we can, yet die we must. Enter Oxford and Somerset, Somerset. Ah, Warwick, Warwick! Wert thou as we are, we might recover all our loss again. The queen from France hath brought a puissant power. Even now we heard the news. Ah, couldst thou fly? Warwick. Why then, I would not fly. 
Ah, Montague, if thou be there, sweet brother, take my hand, and with thy lips keep in my soul a while. Thou lovest me not, for, brother, if thou didst, thy tears would wash this cold congealed blood that glues my lips and will not let me speak. Come quickly, Montague, or I am dead. Somerset. Ah, Warwick! Montague hath breathed his last, and to the latest gasp cried out for Warwick, and said commend me to my valiant brother. And more he would have said, and more he spoke, which sounded like a clamor in a vault, that might not be distinguished. But at last, I well might hear, delivered with a groan, O oh, farewell, Warwick! Warwick! Sweet rest his soul! Fly, lords, and save yourselves, for Warwick bids you all farewell, to meet in heaven. Dies, Oxford! Away, away, to meet the queen's great power! Here they bear away his body, scene three. Another part of the field flourish. Enter King in triumph, with Gloucester, Clarence, and the rest King Edward. Thus far our fortune keeps an upward course, and we are gracked with wreaths of victory. But in the midst of this bright shining day I spy a black, suspicious, threatening cloud that will encounter with our glorious sun ere he attain his easeful western bed I mean, my lords, those powers that the Queen hath riced in Gallia have arrived our coast, and, as we hear, march on to fight with U.S. Clarence. A little gale will soon disperse that cloud and blow it to the source from whence it came. Thy very beams will dry those vapors up, for every cloud engenders not a storm. Gloucester. The queen is valued thirty thousand strong, and Somerset, with Oxford, fled to her. If she have time to breathe, be well assured her faction will be full as strong as ours. King Edward are advertised by our loving friends that they do hold their course toward Tewkesbury. We, having now the best at Barnet Field, will thither straight, for willingness rids way, and as we march our strength will be augmented in every county as we go along. Strike up the drum, cry courage, and away. Exit Scene 4 Plains where Tewkesbury flourish. March Enter Queen Margaret, Prince Edward, Somerset, Oxford, and soldiers Queen Margaret. Great lords, why? As ye men ne'er sit and wail their loss, but cheerly seek how to redress their harms. What though the mast be now blown overboard, the cable broke, the holding anchor lost, and half our sailors swallowed in the flood, yet lives our pilot still. Is meet that he should leave the helm and, like a fearful lad, with tearful eyes add water to the sea and give more strength to that which hath too much? Whiles, in his moan, the ship splits on the rock, which industry and courage might have saved. Ah, what a shame! Ah, what a fault were this! Say Warwick was our anchor, what of that? And Montague our top mast, what of him? Our slot red friends the tackles, what of these? Why, is not Oxford here another anchor? And Somerset another goodly mast? The friends of France are shrouds and tacklings? And though unskillful, why not Ned and I for once allowed the skillful pilot's charge? We will not from the helm to sit and weep, but keep our course, though the rough winds say no, from shelves and rocks that threaten us with wreck, as good to chide the waves as speak them fair. And what is Edward but a ruthless sea? What Clarence but a quick send of deceit? And Richard but a ragged fatal rock? All these the enemies to our poor bark. Say you can swim. Alas, tis but a while. Tread on the sand. Why, there you quickly sink. Bestride the rock. The tide will wash you off, or else you famish that's a threefold death. This speak I, lords, to let you understand, if case some one of you would fly from us, that there's no hop for mercy with the brothers more than with ruthless waves, with sands and rocks. Why, courage then. What cannot be avoided to her childish weakness to lament or fear? Prince of Wales Methinks a woman of this valiant spirit should, if a coward hear her speak these words, infuse his breast with magnanimity, and make him naked foil a man-at-arms. I speak not this as doubting any here, for did I but suspect a fearful man, he should have leave to go away betimes, lest in our need he might infect another and make him of the like spirit to himself. 
If any such be here as God forbid, let him depart before we need his help. Oxford. Women and children of so high courage, and warriors faint. Why, twere perpetual shame. O brave young prince, thy famous grandfather doth live again in thee. Long mayst thou eve to bear his image, and renew his glories. Somerset. And he that will not fight for such a hope, go home to bed and, like the owl by day, if he arise, be mocked and wandered at. Queen Margaret. Thanks, gentle Somerset, sweet Oxford, thanks, Prince of Wales. And take his thanks that yet hath nothing else. Enter a messenger, messenger. Prepare you, lords, for Edward is at hand ready to fight, therefore be resolute. Oxford. I thought no less. It is his policy to haste thus fast, to find us unprovided. Somerset. But he's deceived, we are in readiness. Queen Margaret. This cheers my heart, to see your forwardness. Oxford. Here pitch our battle, hence we will not budge. Flourish and march. Enter, at a distance, King Edward, Gloucester, Clarence, and soldiers King Edward. Brave followers, yonder stands the thorny wood which, by the heaven's assistance and your strength, must by the roots be hewn up yet ere night. I need not add more fuel to your fire, for while I would ye blaze to burn them out. Give signal to the fight, and to it, lords. Queen Margaret. Lords, knights, and gentlemen, what I should say my tears gainsay. For every word I speak, ye see, I drink the water of my eye. Therefore, no more but this, Henry, your sovereign, is prisoner to the foe, his stake usurped, his realm a slaughterhouse, his subjects slain, his statutes cancelled, and his treasure spent, and yonder is the wolf that makes this spoil. You fight in justice. Then, in God's name, lords, be valiant, and give signal to the fight. Alarum, retreat, excursions. Excellent scene B. Another part of the field flourish. Enter King Edward, Gloucester, Clarence, and forces, with Queen Margaret, Oxford, and Somerset, prisoners King Edward. Now here a period of tumultuous broils. Away with Oxford to Hames Castle straight, for Somerset, off with his guilty head. Go, bear them hence, I will not hear them speak. Oxford. For my part I'll not trouble thee with words. Somerset. Nor I, but stoop with patience to my fortune. Exit Oxford and Somerset, guarded Queen Margaret. So part we sadly in this troublous world, to meet with joy in sweet Jerusalem. King Edward. Is proclamation made that who finds Edward shall have a high reward, and he his life? Gloucester. It is, and lo where youthful Edward comes. Enter soldiers, with Prince Edward King Edward. Bring forth the gallant, let us hear him speak. What, can so young a man begin to prick? Edward, what satisfaction canst thou make for bearing arms, for stirring up my subjects, and all the trouble thou hast turned me to? Prince of Wales. Speak like a subject, proud ambitious York. Suppose that I am now my father's mouth, resign. Thy chair, and where I stand kneel thou, whilst I propose the self-same words to the witch, traitor, thou wouldst have me answer to. Queen Margaret. Ah, that thy father had been so resolved. Gloucester. That you might still have worn the petticoat, and ne'er have stolen the breach from Lancaster. Prince of Wales. Let Aesop fable in a winter's night. His currish riddle sorts not with this place. Gloucester. By heaven, brat, I'll plague ye for that word. Queen Margaret. Ay, thou wast born to be a plague to men. Gloucester. For God's sake, take away this captive scold. Prince of Wales. Nay, take away this scolding crook back rather. King Edward. Peace, willful boy, or I will charm your tongue. Clarence. Untutored lad, thou art too malapert. Prince of Wales. I know my duty, you are all undutiful. Lascivious Edward, and thou perjured George, and thou misshapen Dick, I tell ye all I am your better, traitors as ye are, 
and thou usurp'st my father's right and mine. King Edward, take that, the likeness of this railer here. Stabs him, Gloucester. Sprawl'st thou? Take that, to end thy agony. Stabs him, Clarence. And there's for twitting me with perjury. Stabs him, Queen Margaret. Oh, kill me too. Gloucester. Mary and shall. Offers to kill her, King Edward. Hold, Richard, hold, for we have done too much. Gloucester. Why should she live to fill the world with words? King Edward. What does she swoon? Use means for her recovery. Gloucester. Clarence, excuse me to the king, my brother. I'll hence to London on a serious matter. Ere ye come there, be sure to hear some news. Clarence. What? What? Gloucester. The tower. The tower. Exit Queen Margaret. O Ned, sweet Ned, speak to thy mother, boy. Canst thou not speak? O traitors! Murderers! They that stabbed Caesar shed no blood at all, did not offend, nor were not worthy blame, if this foul deed were by to equal it. He was a man, this, in respect, a child, and men ne'er spend their fury on a child. What's worse than murderer, that I may name it? No, no, my heart will burst, and if I speak and I will speak, that so my heart may burst. Butchers and villains! Bloody cannibals! How sweet a plant have you untimely cropped! You have no children, butchers, if you had, the thought of them would have stirred up remorse. But if you ever chance to have a child, look in his youth to have him so cut off as death's men, you have rid this sweet young prince. King Edward! Away with her, go, bear her hence perforce. Queen Margaret, nay, never bear me hence, dispatch me here. Here sheath thy sword, I'll pardon thee my death. What, wilt thou not? Then, Clarence, do it thou. Clarence, by heaven, I will not do thee so much ease. Queen Margaret, good Clarence, do, sweet Clarence, do thou do it. Clarence, Didst thou not hear me swear I would not do it? Queen Margaret. Ay, but thou usest to forswear thyself. Twas sin before, but now tis charity. What? Wilt thou not? Where is that devil's butcher, hard-favored Richard? Richard, where art thou? Thou art not here. Murder is thy alms deed, petitioners for blood thou ne'er puts back. King Edward. Away, I say. I charge ye bear her hence. Queen Margaret. So come to you and yours as to this prince. Exit led out forcibly King Edward. Where's Richard gone? Clarence. To London, all in post, and, as I guess, to make a bloody supper in the tower. King Edward. He's sudden, if a thing comes in his head. Now march we hence. Discharge the common sort with pay and thanks and let's away to London, and see our gentle queen how well she fares. By this, I hope, she hath a son for me. Excellent Scene 6 London The tower enter King Henry and Gloucester with the lieutenant, on the walls Gloucester. Good day, my lord. What, at your book so hard? King Henry Ay, my good lord, my lord, I should say rather. To sin to flatter, good was little better. Good Gloucester and good devil were alike, and both preposterous. Therefore, not good lord. Gloucester. Sarah, leave us to ourselves. We must confer. Exit Lieutenant King Henry. So flies the reckless shepherd from the wolf. So first the harmless sheep doth yield his fleece, and next his throat unto the butcher's knife. What scene of death hath Roshus now to act? Gloucester. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. The thief doth fear each bush an officer. King Henry. The bird that hath been limed in a bush with trembling wings misdoubteth every bush. And I, the hapless male to one sweet bird, have now the fatal object in my eye where my poor young was limbed, was caught, and killed. Gloucester. Why, what a peevish fool was that of Crete that taught his son the office of a fowl. And yet, for all his wings, the fool was drowned. King Henry. 
I, Deadless, my poor boy Icarus, thy father, Minus, that denied our course, the son that seared the wings of my sweet boy, thy brother Edward, and thyself, the sea whose envious gulf did swallow up his life. Ah, kill me with thy weapon, not with words. My breast can better brook th. Why daggers point then can my ears that tragic history? But wherefore dost thou come? Is for my life? Gloucester. Think'st thou I am an executioner? King Henry. A persecutor I am sure thou art. If murdering innocence be executing, why, then thou art an executioner. Gloucester. Thy son I killed for his presumption. King Henry. Hadst thou been killed when first thou didst presume, thou hadst not lived to kill a son of mine. And thus I prophesy, that many a thousand which now mistrust no parcel of my fear, and many an old man's sigh, and many a widow's, and many an orphan's water standing I men for their sons, wives for their husbands, orphans for their parents' timeless death shall rue the hour that ever thou wast born. The owl shrieked at thy birth an evil sign. The night crow cried, a boding luckless time. Dogs howled, and hideous tempests shook down trees. The raven rooked her on the chimney's top, and chattering pies and dismal discords sung. Thy mother felt more than a mother's pain, and yet brought forth less than a mother's hope, to wit, an indigest deformed lump, not like the fruit of such a goodly tree. Teeth hadst thou in thy head when thou wast born, to signify thou camest to bite the world and if the rest be true which I have heard, thou camest Gloucester. I'll hear no more. Die, prophet, in thy speech. Stabs him, for this, amongst the rest, was I ordained. King Henry. I, and for much more slaughter after this. O oh, God, forgive my sins and pardon thee. Dies, Gloucester. What, will the aspiring blood of Lancaster sink in the ground? I thought it would have mounted. See how my sword weeps for the poor king's death. Oh, may such purple tears be always shed from those that wish the downfall of our house. If any spark of life be yet remaining, down, down to hell, and say I sent thee thither, stabs him again, I, that have neither pity, love, nor fear. Indeed, tis true that Henry told me of, for I have often heard my mother say I came into the world with my legs forward. Had I not reason, think ye? to make haste and seek their ruin that usurped our right? The midwife wondered, and the women cried, Oh, Jesus bless us, he is born with teeth. And so I was, which plainly signified that I should snarl, and bite, and play the dog. Then, since the heavens have shaped my body so, let hell make crooked my mind to answer it. I have no brother, I am like no brother, and this word love, which graybeards call divine, be resident in men like one another, and not in me. I am myself alone. Clarence, beware, thou keepst me from the light, but I will sort a pitchy day for thee, for I will buzz abroad such prophecies that Edward shall be fearful of his life, and then to purge his fear, I'll be thy death. King Henry and the prince his son are gone. Clarence, thy turn is next, and then the rest, counting myself but bad till I be best. I'll throw thy body in another room, and triumph, Henry, in thy day of doom. Exit with the body scene seven. London. The palace flourish. Enter King Edward, Queen Elizabeth, Clarence, Gloucester, Hastings, Nurse, with the young prince, and attendants King Edward. Once more we sit in England's royal throne, repurchased with the blood of enemies. What valiant foemen, like to autumn's corn, have we mowed down in tops of all their pride. Three dukes of Somerset, threefold renowned for hardy and undoubted champions, two Cliffords, as the father and the son, and two Northumberland's two braver men ne'er spurred their coursers at the trumpet's sound, with them the two brave bears, Warwick and Montague, that in their chains fettered the kingly lion and made the forest tremble when they roared. Thus have we swept suspicion from our seat and made our footstool of security. Come hither, Bess, and let me kiss my boy. Young Ned, for thee thine uncles and myself have in our armors watched the winter's night, went all afoot in summer's scalding heat, that thou mightst repossess the crown in peace, and of our labors thou shalt reap the gain. Gloucester. 
Aside, I'll blast his harvest if your head were laid, for yet I am not looked on in the world. This shoulder was ordained so thick to heave, and heave it shall some weight, or break my back. Work thou the way, and that shall execute. King Edward. Clarence and Gloucester, love my lovely queen, and kiss your princely nephew, brothers both. Clarence. The duty that I owe unto your majesty I seal upon the lips of this sweet babe. King Edward. Thanks, noble Clarence. Worthy brother, thanks. Gloucester. And that I love the tree from whence thou sprangst, witness the loving kiss I give the fruit. Aside, to say the truth, so Judas kissed his master and cried all hail, when as he meant all harm. King Edward. Now am I seated as my soul delights, having my country's peace and brother's loves. Clarence. What will your grace have done with Margaret? Rainier, her father, to the king of France hath pawned the Sicils in Jerusalem, and hither have they sent a death. Or her ransom. King Edward. Away with her, and waft her hence to France. And now what rests but that we spend the time with stately triumphs, mirthful comic shows, such as befits the pleasure of the court. Sound drums and trumpets. Farewell, sour annoy. For here, I hope, begins our lasting joy. Excellent King Henry the Eighth, Dramatis Personae King Henry the Eighth, Cardinal Wolsey, Cardinal Campius Capucius, Ambassador from the Emperor Charles V Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury, Duke of Norfolk, Duke of Buckingham, Duke of Suffolk, Earl of Surrey, Lord Chamberlain, Lord Chancellor, Gardiner. Bishop of Winchester, Bishop of Lincoln, Lord Abergavenny, Lord Sandys, S.I.R. Henry Guilford, S.I.R. Thomas Lovell, S.I.R. Anthony Denny, S.I.R. Nicholas Vaux, Secretaries to Wolsey Cromwell, Servant to Wolsey Griffith. Gentleman Usher to Queen Catherine, Three Gentlemen Doctor Butts, Physician to the King Garter, King at Arms, Surveyor to the Duke of Buckingham, Brandon, and a Sergeant at Arms, Doorkeeper of the Council Chamber Porter, and his man page to Gardiner A. Cryer, Queen Catherine wife to King Henry, afterwards divorced and Bullen, her maid of honor, afterwards queen and old lady, friend to and Bullen patience. Woman to Queen Catherine Lord Mayor, aldermen, lords and ladies in the dumb shows, women. Attending upon the queen, scribes, officers, guards, and other attendants, spirits seen, London, Westminster, Kimbolton King Henry the Eighth, the prologue. I come no more to make you laugh, Things now that bear a weighty and a serious brow, sad, high, and working, full of state and woe, such noble scenes as draw the eye to flow, we now present. Those that can pity here may, if they think it well, let fall a tear, the subject will deserve it. Such as give their money out of hope they may believe may here find truth too. Those that come to see only a show or two, and so agree the play may pass, if they be still and willing. I'll undertake may see away their shilling richly in two short hours. Only they that come to hear a merry body play, a noise of targets, or to see a fellow in a long motley coat guarded with yellow, will be deceived. For, gentle hearers, no, to rank our chosen truth with such a show as fool and fight is, beside forfeiting our own brains, and the opinion that we bring to make that only true we now intend, will leave us never an understanding friend. Therefore, for goodness' sake, and as you are known the first and happiest hearers of the town, be sad, as we would make ye. Think ye see the very persons of our noble story as they were living. Think ye see them great, and followed with the general throng and sweat of thousand friends. Then, in a moment, see how soon this mightiness meets misery. And if you can be merry then, I'll say a man may weep upon his wedding day.